Everybody, TYG Sports, Ben Mankiewicz and Francis Maxwell. So uh, the big story today in the NFL is the retirement of uh, Marcus Lattimore, great running back for the Gamecocks uh, uh, under coach Steve Spurrier, tore his knee up twice in 54 weeks, famously for those who could follow college football. It obviously would have been a first round draft choice, a tremendous talent, a five-star recruit, probably the biggest recruit that Steve Spurrier ever got to South Carolina. Uh, then he does get drafted in the fourth round by the 49ers last year, sits out all last season rehabbing, drawing a salary and rehabbing on the Niners, on the Niners uh, dole. And then, uh, not on the Niners dole, on the Niners time, on the Niners dime. And then he uh, uh, was hoping to come back and play at the end of this season and was rehabbing this year with the hope of getting back for the back half of the season, maybe even the last four games, see what kind of player he was. But today, uh, he stopped. Um, and he did so uh, rather nobly. And, and it's worth noting, first of all, just in an era when we see so many stars sort of hanging on and the retirements are, you know, I, I can't say they're bungled because I would play until I couldn't move, you know. Yeah. Um, but he retired nobly. This was his statement. After prayer and careful consideration, I've decided it's time to end my professional football career. I've given my heart and soul to a game I love. It's time for me to move on to the next chapter of my life and help others. I've given every ounce of my energy toward making a full recovery from my knee injury. I've made a lot of progress. Unfortunately, getting my knee fully back to the level the NFL demands has proven to be insurmountable. He thanks the 49ers then. Though I am proud of what I've accomplished throughout my football career, I'm sincerely disappointed it must end, but I trust that God has a great plan for my future. As for what's next, I'll be returning to the University of South Carolina to complete my degree. Obviously good for him. Yeah. I cannot say enough about the support from the Gamecock family since the first day I stepped on campus until now. I'm so proud to be part of the USC family. Marcus, I love you. It's not USC. USC is out here. That's the University of South Carolina. And I promise to always represent the garnet and black with honor and integrity. I also continue to work with my foundation, the Marcus Lattimore Foundation Dreams, to provide opportunities and platforms to benefit youth sports programs in South Carolina. I'm looking forward to pursuing my personal interests, helping others achieve their goals and dreams. So many people have supported me throughout my career, it's impossible to list them all and to show them the proper gratitude. I must thank God for his blessings and guidance. I would not be here where I am today without the support of my family. I also appreciate the outpouring of support from friends, fans, opposing players, and strangers. Your support means more than you will ever know. Really a nice statement. Yeah, I mean, so this brings back a story for me. Um, going to obviously go back into soccer, my team Celtic. This guy who was one of the most promising athletes, John Kennedy, his name was, made his Scotland debut, so his international debut, got his knee shattered by a horrendous tackle. Um, and what happened in that was that he tried for five years to try and make recovery kept returning it but um, one of the most noble things I think that people should do in this situation is that Celtic then brought him on as a full-time youth coach and now he, he helps uh, people with rehab and how they can get back to this he helps players because he is a professional athlete it was sorry and he was just a great role model for this and so this brings up a question Isn't for me the story of Bendit like Beckham yeah <laughs> could have been that I think that's could have been the, the story like that yeah. uh, so he done a they done a great job of making sure that this this guy who, who was all his life in front of him basically uh, taken away from him by a horrendous injury. So this just is me out of curiosity. What is next, you think, for this guy? Well, a couple things. The, both the uh, uh, South Carolina has said that they there's a spot for him. Like they'll give him a job. Whether you know he was a, uh, a Spurrier said he was an inspiration and a team leader throughout. Yeah. So that there's a coaching job for him or some job at the university. Yes. Like he can work. But then there's this part of it. He, he has a $1.7 million insurance policy, which would have let him play four games in the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't play any. He's going to have to have a doctor sign off that his knee injury is too debilitating. He paid about, I think, $20,000 for this policy before the first injury or maybe in between injuries. Jason, do you know? Injuries. In between injuries, he took out this policy. He got it. He paid a lot of money for it. But he's going to cash it in. $1.7 million is a lot of money. It's a lot of money in South Carolina, yeah. and that's apparently where he's going to go back live. Plus, he made like 300 grand from the Niners. I got a $300,000 signing bonus plus some salary. So yeah. he earned. But South Carolina has a, uh, as Grantland uh, points out in a really nice piece, um, South Carolina has a, a, a scoreboard now at Williams Bryce Stadium that's half the size of a college basketball field. Wow. And this is while the state capital, which is just a few miles away, 
uh, as Grantland writes, uh, Michael Bauman writes in Grantland, the, the South Carolina legislature is doing what you expect a Republican legislature to do, which is just cut all sorts of education funding, making it tougher on people. And here's this school that pays its college football coach $4 million a year. And as, again, as Grantland points out, Steve Sprayer, kind of one of the good guys who's willing to, he'd be, he's sort of for, in some ways, paying play for, he, he, p playing players. He has a refined, progressive view on this issue. But they pay him a ton of money. They built that, they, they upgraded the stadium. Other sports have been upgraded there all led by the football program, which became a top 10, top 15 program under Spurrier, with, led really by athletes like Clowney and Marcus Lattimore. Yeah. So, and now, yeah, he's got a 1.7 million bucks, but he made, you know, he didn't get a dime for those jerseys, he didn't get a dime of those television contracts, he didn't get a dime of the SEC championship game money that South Carolina found itself getting. Yeah. You know, I, I uh, there's something wrong with that. Yeah. There's something wrong with that. So, oh, sorry. Dollar signing bonus when he jumped in with. I mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. You so, mentioned that. So one point seven. You add the three hundred. It's not like I mean nobody right. nobody's shedding a tear. He's 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 getting two million bucks yeah. plus plus his plus his salaries for the last season and a half in the NFL. Right. People also forget that uh, South Carolina 2010 2011 wasn't just uh, Clowney wasn't just Lattimore. Alshon Jeffrey was their receiver. Yeah. No. No. They, they, they. But but he was the premier recruit oh, to yeah. come and you know Mr. South Carolina in football I think and he a five star out in his first three games in his sophomore he ground out like 95 carries in three games which is I mean that's a for any college play that's yeah like, and he didn't, like, he didn't numbers there he wasn't I know you you, you American football is a little foreign to you that's but, why, he, yeah, but he didn't really. dance around people he knocked them over okay he took hit after hit after hit and then we see this kid at Mississippi the wide receiver Laquan Treadwell who by the way scores his first touchdown I mean th this Laquan Treadwell has an NFL future in front of him. He is big, he is fast, he is strong, he makes people miss. You know, and the good news about Treadwell is it looks like uh, he'll be back. They're hoping he might even be back for spring practice. He's going to miss four months. But, you know, th that looked like it certainly could have been. Thankfully, he broke his leg and didn't tear his knee, yeah. which is a difficult, you know, we can, we hope yes. we can heal broken bones. Yeah. But uh, these kids are they deserve something more than they're getting. Yeah, so and, and, and I didn't always feel that way, but I, I feel that way now. So my question is, obviously stressing that I am not um, hugely knowledgeable in football, American football or basketball, but I am looking at this from a journalistic perspective and I want to know, um, I may be, or this may already be happening, but in the sports, in sports such as American football and basketball, when these players are drafted into the NFL, is there some sort of a clause that they can have in their contract that if things don't work out or they receive a, a horrendous injury that they're able to go back to school um, and achieve, achieve their degree like, to a certain extent that they don't... I would imagine don't... that a scholarship, I don't, I don't know for yes. sure. It's a really good question, but I imagine that scholarship offers probably stay on the table for you to come back and finish your degree if yeah. you wanted to. They certainly, they certainly ought to, because that's not, it's really, there's no expense there to the university that you can come back, take classes, and finish your degree. Yeah. I don't think you give up that right. I, sh I presume you give up the right if you drop out of school. Yes. Um, but maybe, I don't know, if you, but maybe leaving school to go to the, go to the league uh, makes a difference. But in this case, South Carolina is welcome. He may welcome. be paying yeah. in-state tuition. I don't know, but I think the scholarship Stay. Should, should stay. The because scholarship should thing. stay. Because I mean, that's what people don't understand. Yes, these guys have the dream ahead of them and they are gifted, but they're putting their body on the line and at any moment it could end with a horrendous injury. So um, these, as you said, he brought in how much, like numerous amount of money for this college. Yeah, they, re a great they, value they redid them, so their football they redid. stadium. They, they became a different kind of football school. So they, they are, they're doing what each college should do and be rightly, rightly so is give him a chance to get his degree back free of charge, I guess, with no scholarship. But I know kids who have um, been drafted from maybe not as much of a, uh, a known sport into soccer and they've had their career ended by a bad injury and they've had to go back and pay to go back to the college. And that yeah. for me is something that maybe it should be looked into if it's not already known, but there should be a clause that allows these kids who are obviously going out to represent their school, bringing in this value, be able to go back and get their degree that they started off with the hope of getting if they happen to be drafted early on in their career and they suffer an injury. I couldn't agree more, which uh, disappoints me. That's fantastic.